Earlier this week, Apple showed off its latest device, the Apple Vision Pro. And basically what it is, is it's an augmented reality or mixed reality headset. So you put this thing on and it can put virtual screens up in front of you so you can see things like a computer screen or like um, iMessage from Apple or you know photos, stuff like that. But it also has cameras facing outward so you can also see the environment around you. So you should be able to like walk around your room and do different things like that and still be immersed in your content if you want, right? But one of the big keys to what they showed off was they showed off entertainment, specifically movies. They showed the ability to play video like Apple Arcade video games with a game controller. They also showed that it could have the ability to watch sporting events like sitting courtside at a basketball game and different things like that. So that is super cool. But what really got me excited was when watching movies in a certain mode, apparently you can make the screen wide enough to be a hundred feet wide and i was like oh my gosh that is super cool in the house because most people i don't well i mean unless you got like a mcmansion or something like that you can't go with a hundred foot wide screen in most houses right so that would be a super cool experience and it had me thinking is my home theater which i have behind me is it now obsolete is you know apple vision pro going to be like the new home theater experience so that's what i want to talk about in this video and kind of give you my thoughts on sort of what they showed off and where i think it's going to go maybe in the future so let's talk about that Okay, so like I said, this thing was just shown off this week. It doesn't actually ship until early next year, and that's only in the US. We don't have any shipping dates for any country outside of the US, and sorry about that, but that's just the way it is, and maybe that's due to limited supply or whatever, but it's also gonna be really, really expensive. Uh, it's going to start at $3,499, and that is just like, ouch. <laughs> you know, that's pretty, whew, the rumor said 3,000 and it's 3,400, so it's not much more than the rumors, but that's still a lot of money. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, with this particular headset, what you're getting is you're getting a headset uh, that you're gonna put on and there's some certain fit things that you have to do, like they have what they call the light seal that matches to your face. And there's gonna be a few different sizes of that from what I understand, and it may be several. Um, and a strap that you can put behind your head so it gets a good fit. There's also a strap that goes over your head, which is what a lot of people use when they tried it on um, at the event because there was a try on area uh, there for a lot of the press. And there are several videos on YouTube where they talk about, it. and I'm gonna link a couple in the, uh, in the description below because uh, I think MKBHD's video was actually really good. Also, uh, Brian Tong did basically like a podcast um, there at Apple and he put out a video that I think was really good as well. I watched that. Uh, so I'll put, I'll put some links to those in the description below. But, um, so you have this headset that you put on and when you put it on, what Apple has done is they've got these really nice sharp lenses in there and they are looking at these little posted size screens, one for each eye. Now these screens have 23 million plus pixels in them. So it's basically greater than 4K resolution for each one of your eyes, which is super cool. And like I said, it is mixed reality. So you have virtual screens in front of you, but since there are cameras facing out, you can see the environment around you if you want to, but there's also a dial up top. So you can kind of dial it in so you're in total virtual reality or just partial, and then you can kind of mess around with it, which is really, really cool. And again, getting back to those that actually used it, basically everybody said that it is really, really nice. I mean, really nice for a first generation, basically prototype. And the way it works is it's got eye tracking built into the headset. So whatever you look at, it knows you're looking at it. So you can select objects with just, or you can look at objects and it knows you're looking at them with your eyes. And then you use your hands and little hand gestures because it got cameras so you can see your hands um, and select different items. Or you can use speech to say, hey, you know, select iMessage or something like that. So that's really cool. Now, another feature of it is it has speakers built in on each side of the headset and they kind of point towards your ear and they have two drivers in them on each side and from what apple says they can do spatial audio so you have the impression of things above you 
to your sides, behind you, that sort of thing. So spatial audio, just like, you know, home theater surround sound as well. So I'm, I'm really curious about that. I really want to see how that works. And that's, I want to talk about that in a minute, but it also has the ability to pair with AirPods. So you can put your AirPods in. I think that's really cool. Now, looking at the design and some of the pictures I looked at, I think if you were to put uh, headphones over it, it probably wouldn't work because you wouldn't get a good seal, at least on one side. So I don't know if that's going to work, but I think AirPods will work pretty fine. Um, so that's sort of the overall design right now after watching all of not all of them but several different videos of people coming out after their experience and how excited they were i'm excited as well because i think this thing is really kind of i don't want to say a breakthrough but definitely revolutionary um in what it can do even right now but let's talk for a minute about specs because i'm kind of getting a little bit ahead of myself we don't have that many specs but we do have a few like i said greater than 4k in each eye you've got special audio but it also has the ability to do sdr and hdr so i don't know how many nits that is but it can do hdr so you can watch a lot of your uh, content in 4k hdr so that's a good thing uh the screens themselves they have a refresh rate of 90 hertz but that can be ramped up to 96 hertz if you are watching a movie now movies are shot in or most movies are shot at 24 frames per second so or 24 is a quarter of 96 so you don't have to worry about frame dropping or frame interpolation or anything like that so i think that is a good thing as well now since this has two screens one for each eye it does have the ability to show you 3d content one of the things that they showed was you can take a 3d video if you want and watch it on the screen but you can also just watch movies in 3d and those that had a chance to use it for about 30 minutes or so um, while apple watch they got to see a little bit of the latest avatar movie and again they said it looked great but I will say this, or I should say it like this. Uh, one of the things that I've been concerned about with pretty much any virtual reality headset is will it make you sick? Because with virtual reality and a lot of the previous headsets, a lot of people just, they didn't feel good to their stomach because, you know, things are moving, but their body's not moving. Um, but everybody that I've seen said they, did, they didn't really get sick. They spent about 30 minutes with it and they didn't get sick. Even people that said, you know, they typically get sick with these, they didn't get sick. And, you know, a lot of people attribute it to the resolution being so high, the fact that the response time of things moving and your interactions is so low i think it's like either eight or 12 milliseconds i think it's 12 milliseconds something like that and also the refresh rate i think helps as well so that's a good thing spending this kind of money you know you don't want to get sick with it right we also know um that the frame is made out of aluminum so it's metal they've got glass so there's a little bit of weight to it but we don't actually know the weight of the product we just know that it does have a little bit of weight to it um when you're wearing it and some people did say that after you know wearing it for about 30 minutes it did they did notice it on the front of their face and stuff like that so there's that going on uh it also does come with a battery pack which lasts about two hours from what i understand uh so you can kind of move around with it you don't have to be plugged into the wall but if you want to watch a full-length movie it does have a pass-through mode so you can plug in i think i uh, plug to that battery pack and you know plug it into the wall i think it's USB C, and sit down and watch all the movies you want to watch you know because you're plugged right in so that's a good thing and that's kind of the specs of this device uh overall but let's go ahead and let's talk about some of how i see this kind of going in general um like i said i am excited about it because the people that saw it were excited about it and i want to try it out myself but is this really the future of home theater as you know all my stuff back here obsolete i'm not convinced and i say that for a few reasons First of all, uh, this is a singular experience. And what I mean by that is you put the headset on and you are watching content. Nobody around you is actually watching content unless they have uh, a headset as well. And maybe there's a share play way where you can both be synced up and watching the same thing at the same time. I don't know if that's true, but maybe it's possible. Um, but it's just not very communal. I mean, even if you can look at one another and see one another, you know, through the cameras on the headset, it's still not as communal as not wearing a headset. And one of the things that we learned learn through you know COVID-19 and that whole experience when movie theaters shut down they've reopened again and people go to movie theaters I've been to see a few movies myself since COVID because it's such a great communal experience you're getting a chance to interact with other people even though you might not know them you're all laughing about the same thing and you know getting jump scares about the same thing and if you're in your own virtual environment it's just it's not quite that right so that's one of the reasons why i'm not so sure that this is going to be the quote-unquote future of home theater 
Another issue that I think this may have as far as this first generation product is its weight. Uh, and that's because, like I said earlier, as people did the demos and they talked about it, some of them said, hey, I noticed that I was wearing it after 20 or 30 minutes and I had to sort of adjust the straps just to kind of keep it a good, you know, good on my head. And honestly, that might have been because the light seal part, because there's a little part on the front that kind of sticks on your head. They call it the light seal. Didn't quite fit their face right or something like that. So, you know, having it really contoured for your face it may help it adjust perfectly so you don't notice the weight. But with so many people kind of saying hey i did at least notice it after 20 or 30 minutes uh, i think it might be a little bit heavy and it might be you know a little bit hard to sit and watch a two and a half hour movie if you feel like something's kind of falling you know falling down on your face now if you're sitting back reclined with your head up and it's kind of pressing against your face maybe it's not that big of a deal but that can be an issue so that's one of the things the next thing i think about is honestly just the price in general right and i'm kind of of two minds of this price right first of all it's expensive thirty five hundred dollars expensive right but i'm reminded that when you buy the latest and greatest oled televisions let's say the 77 inch sony i think that's around four thousand dollars right um maybe even five thousand dollars actually <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it but these tvs are you know five six thousand dollars and this is like 77 inch if you go to 83 or the 90 these are really expensive tvs so spending that kind of money is not necessarily unheard of for a movie theater like experience right when you start talking about televisions but the difference between this and buying a television you know at 83 inches at five thousand dollars is this is again a singular experience it's not like you're buying a tv for basically anybody that comes in your home either you know whether they live there or your friends or whatever everybody can enjoy the tv with this you're enjoying it by yourself okay so i think that is a big difference and that is probably honestly why it's not going to get mass adoption at this particular price now the final thing i want to talk about is audio quality and honestly i don't have an opinion one way or the other really about it but i do have some thoughts again i have not tried the vision pro did not go to wwdc i have not tried it and really heard anybody really really talk about this but i'm concerned about the audio quality uh, apple says that those audio pods i think is what they call them uh produce spatial audio which i think is real and they can you know make you know simulated above the head below the head or whatever but is it going to be as good as a theater experience like someone could have in their home again someone that's spending four five thousand dollars on a television they probably also have a pretty nice audio system right because most people know that you know tv speakers are not going to be that good so they're going to buy something to give themselves a better audio experience and probably you know multiple speakers a full theater setup they're going to do something and i don't know if this can really compete with that particular thing for a lot of reasons first of all you know you've got two drivers per side and so you've got four drivers kind of trying to do everything second of all uh one of the things that is a big part of movie experiences especially adventure movies is base and a lot of people have you know subwoofer setups in their home and they have multiple subwoofers so they can not only hear the bass but they can feel it even if they can't hear it you know you can it's below 20 hertz you can feel it in your chest and that's what they're going for right well with these little drivers you're not going to get that kind of bass right so um i think that's somewhat interesting and you know some people say well you can put air uh air pods in your ears and that's true you can put air pods in your ears and those work pretty well but again those still aren't as good as you know dedicated speakers in your home theater uh so i am a little hesitant about the audio quality especially compared to a dedicated rooms audio quality with this particular setup now if apple were to do something with like let's say the apple tv where you know you can watch the video on the headset but have the audio playing through your apple tv through your receiver or you know processor and then in your main speakers and they're all synced up that'd be really cool and apple if you're watching this video and you think about that that'd be a really cool thing to do um but um that's uh yeah that's really my concern there it's just the audio quality i don't know if that's really going to be all that great so that's what i think i am not so sure that this is the future of home theater at this moment because it is still very singular um the audio quality may or may not be as good as what you can do in a home theater and it just it costs so much but as we move into more generations maybe it gets a little bit lighter price comes down maybe they do a share play experience a few other things or you know maybe it goes from the goggles to you know more like a, a google glass or something but you still get that huge widescreen you know then maybe at that point it becomes much more 
reasonable for a home theater environment. But right now, this first generation, I'm not truly sold. But some of you are probably saying, well, are you gonna get one? Are you gonna try to review it? Truth is I want to, I've got to be honest with you, I'd love to review this product. Um, I have zero contacts at Apple, but at Apple, if you are watching this video for whatever reason, and you know somebody at Apple, and you know, they wanna send one to me, look me up, I, my email's down there, you can find it, right? Um, Cause I will definitely review it. But I definitely wanna to go to a store and check it out. Um, will I actually purchase one? <sighs> 3,500, starting at 3,500 is really expensive. And once you add taxes onto that, it's probably gonna be close to 4,000. Um, and honestly, and I didn't really say this earlier, but when I think about starts at 3,500, I'm trying to figure out what else would be on top of that. Uh, personally, I think that if you're gonna travel with this, like they talk about traveling with this thing and having it on an airplane, which I would never do because it costs like $3,500, I don't want that thing stolen, you know? Um, but um, I think one of the add-ons could be, you know, like they do for iPads, where if you want the 5G modem, um, you're gonna need, you know, an extra 130 bucks or something like that. Um, um, or maybe, you know, there's different storage tiers and stuff like that. And so it starts at 3,500, but if you really want one that's decent, you're spending 4,500 or I, I have no idea. Right. So, um, we're just going to have to see how that goes and sort of how they price out the tiers and what comes in those tiers. But I am excited about it and I am not committing at all to buying one because geez. Uh, but if, you know, one of the videos on this channel pops off, I would love to purchase one and, and review it on the channel. So I'm never going to say never, uh, but I am a little bit like, mm, that's a lot of money for a singular device and a first generation device. But again, it is exciting. I hope you guys are excited about this. If you have comments or questions, drop them in the comment section below, because I'd love to start a conversation. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and notification bell. I'll talk to you next time.